The corner of Moncton Street and Number One Road was for decades the stop for the BC Interurban Tram. In the spring of 1942, at the start of internment, the tram played a major role in transporting Japanese Canadians out of Steveston. Prior to internment, on the eve of World War II, Japanese Canadians made up two-thirds of the population of Steveston and owned many of the businesses. But this vibrant community, a part of Steveston since its beginning, was changed forever on December 7, 1941, when the Japanese Navy attacked Pearl Harbor. The surprise attack shocked all Canadians, but it devastated Japanese Canadians. The day after Pearl Harbor, the federal government ordered all Japanese Canadian fishing boats to port. The boats were impounded and towed up the Fraser River for storage. By late December 1941, the government had confiscated 1,200 boats owned by Japanese Canadians. Within weeks, the boats were put up for sale, creating a buyer's market. For the best maintained vessels on the coast, Nikkei fishermen received much less than what they were worth. In February 1942, the federal government declared Japanese Canadians to be enemy aliens and planned for their expulsion from the BC coast. In total, nearly 22,000 Japanese Canadians were removed in BC. Their properties, homes, furniture, businesses, were liquidated by the federal government. By May, 2,600 residents of Steveston had been interned, leaving a near ghost town. To keep their families together, many Nikkei worked on sugar beet farms in Alberta and Manitoba. Other families were sent to newly constructed camps in the BC interior, like New Denver and Lemon Creek. Many of the makeshift three-room houses were still being built when internees arrived. Still other families were sent to the Kootenai Mountains to abandoned mining towns like Greenwood. Empty hotels and businesses became one-room compartments for families. Overcrowding was severe. Several families had to share kitchen and toilet facilities. Through the years, internees settled in as best they could. They organized an infirmary staffed by Japanese Canadian nurses and converted the fire hall to a school. Greenwood was transformed into a once again bustling community where festivals, parades, and sporting events were a part of everyday life. When World War II ended in 1945, Japanese Canadians were forced by the federal government to make difficult choices. They could remain in internment sites that weren't destroyed, like Greenwood, and begin to rebuild their lives. Two other choices, resulting in a second uprooting, involved moving east of the Rocky Mountains or being deported to Japan, a foreign country to Canadian-born Nikkei. It wasn't until 1949, seven years after the beginning of internment, that they were allowed to return to the West Coast. In 